So, you understand something about your users and what they want. Now you need to consider how to design for them. And you know, this isn't just about stuff like color. You need to think about content design. What does this mean? Well, design is more than you know, graphic design and user interface design. When you look at great progressive web apps, you'll see that they've designed text, images, and media for their users focusing on mobile. Now, many of us have low levels of visual or textual literacy, and some of us can't understand all kinds of visual elements. Now, most people struggle with long blocks of text, especially when we're tired or stressed or in a hurry. We often think about accessibility features, but you know, that affects all of us at some point. Uh, you know, trying to understand gray on white text in sunlight, for example, or text that's too small when you're reading on a phone on a bus. Always prioritize content over layout. One golden rule, does a change make it harder for users to consume content or interact? You, know, you need to be honest. You need to think app. People are using what you built because they want to get something done. You may not need a boring footer on every page, for example. Now, I just wanted to pick up on part of this, and it doesn't matter whether you're creating a content site, an e-commerce app, or even a game. Thinking about text for the web, less is more. People will give up and leave your site unless information is easy to access and understand. You can find out lots more about this at developers.google.com slash web slash billions. And you know, great content design will also make it easier to build really good UI and UX. When it comes to data cost, decide on a data budget and stick to it. Cut the clutter, reduce image sizes, and remove unnecessary content. Think about code design. You know, why does this matter? Well, great responsive design, resilient UX, and performance optimization rely on well-designed code. The phrase separation of concerns sums it up. Use HTML to add meaning and structure, CSS for presentation, and JavaScript for everything else. Use HTML, then CSS if you need it, and then JavaScript if you really need that. Take time and effort to structure your HTML carefully. After all, HTML is the core language of every web page. Build validation into your workflow and make sure code is valid before it's committed to a project. The web was designed first and foremost to be responsive, a mechanism for distributing content to a range of client devices and displays. Some elements are naturally responsive. You know, remember that you can actually deliver text to any platform simply by using standard page elements. Now, some elements, like images, need some CSS effort to work well across platforms. We're going to look at this in much more detail in other parts of this course. At every stage, so say it again, prioritize content over layout. And remember the golden rule, does a change make it harder for users to consume content or interact? Be honest. Okay, so now you're going to get up and do some work. I want you to find answers for each of these points. Who is the audience? What platforms are they on? What data cost can they handle? And remember, we're thinking about your users and what you're building, thinking about your content and the way users need to interact with it.